Hey y'all, it's Mikey from Rockin' K, and you might be asking, what is Rockin' K? Rockin' K is what we call our little slice of homestead here in lovely Germany. We are Americans transplanted to Germany. We came here for work. We bought a farm. This is our adventures of making this farm back into a farm and doing all the renovations and everything to get this, these buildings back to where they need, they need to be. So it's going to be quite the adventure, hence the name Rock and K Adventures. <music> All right, y'all. So in the last installment, I was out here and uh, I'm in I'm in the back. I'm behind the cow barn. We did uh, some burning, and so now the fire pit is nice and burned down and empty. We got some of the grass trimmed around it, got it cleaned up some, but we still got some brush here. We still got a bunch of wood there. Still got a couple of pallets, and yeah. But the place is looking better. When we bought it, uh, there was a lot of stuff left behind um, from the previous previous owners, and we've been going through that stuff as well as you know we're we're in the middle of renovations and we're we're generating our own stuff. So you know, it is a constant battle to keep this place not looking like a like a you know should be condemned because you know the, the bones of this of this this building they're great you know the they went through and you know here in Germany everything is block you know 90% of everything is block nothing is is stick built anymore you know it wasn't stick built or anything here um, they were all about cement and cement block and stuff like that so the bones are great the roof eh. The roof, not so great. We're working on options to replace the roof. Um, but I think we're going to get to doing some more, like, organizing and cleaning up. We got the last cut of hay, and the last cut of hay is sitting in the carport because I didn't uh, get it get it put away yet. And, you know, honestly, I don't have a place to put it. So we're, we're talking about different options and things like that. Because we do, we do have a lot of land here and a lot of places to put things. Um, you know, we're, we're talking about building some outbuildings to, um, to store the, the, the tractors, the tractor attachments and, and like firewood and hay. So, you know, unfortunately, uh, it's got to be built to put the stuff in it and... I got to do some building, but I got to get to some organizing first because we got everything everywhere. And, you know, so the first thing I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to get myself into that carport and get this hay stacked off to the side and get it all organized and neat. Um, I do believe that the hay is sold to somebody we know who has some horses and they need some hay and we just so happen to have hay and we can work a little deal and you know I'm not trying to get top dollar for hay I'm just trying to get uh, some money off my field and pay for equipment because you know I enjoy I enjoy doing the farming thing um, I know it sounds weird but farming is work but you know, getting out there on the tractor and uh, getting something out of your land, uh, it, it, I find it rewarding. Um, not a lot of people won't won't uh, won't find my point of view uh, or won't agree with me, but it is. I mean, I have I have acres of land here. It uh, it's a great pasture. You know, in fact, we're, we're working on putting animals in the pasture. Um, we were going to keep some of the hay, and we probably still will keep some of it. 
because at present I think we have um, a little more than I would say 100 bales, probably probably 120 uh, bales of hay that, that have come off of our field, you know. That, that, that's, it's our hay. And we want to we wanna do, uh, do a steer or two so that we have uh, our own beef and you know, I think that's uh, that's a good thing, right? So we get meat, we get it on the cheaper side because hey, we 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 put in the work, and then we also know where our meat came from. Um, the meat industry here in Germany is not uh, not as uh, crazy or commercialized as I would say, like America, where you got to worry about hormones and you got to worry about all this stuff. Um, because they're very, um, they refer to everything as bio, and, and bio to them means organic. So, um, you know, you hear about it all the time in, in different news outlets and everything that uh, a lot of things are banned in the EU when it comes to foodstuffs and, and such, and that is 100% true. Um, you can't buy Kraft macaroni and cheese here. It doesn't exist. It's not because they can't get it here. They can get all the other craft type, type stuff. You just can't buy macaroni and cheese because of the uh, the dyes in it. But anyway, I digress. I'm, I'm going down rabbit holes. But like I'm saying, I'll, I'll know where my meat comes from and, you know, put the land to work, save some money. Um, but like I was saying, we have hay that needs to be put up and... You know, I'll show you what I'm talking about because, yeah, we uh, we had the last cut, and the last cut happened on a weekend. You know, it happened right coming into the weekend that we were doing the lawnmower racing. And so I had to be up at the track for the races, and I did not have the time to get out on the fields and pull the hay. So thankfully, we had a friend, and he came by, and... Uh, helped Rachel uh, sling the hay and they stacked it all here in the carport for it to stay dry and out of the rain and so we can get it that couple of days to make sure that uh, we didn't bail it too early that the moisture wasn't too high that it wasn't gonna you know want to spontaneously combust because that is a big danger with hay especially when you're a new guy doing hay this is my second time doing hay here it's my second cut. Um, it turned out great. Beautiful bales. It smells great. Um, but we need to get it organized. We need to get it. I have no access to my my back barn with the tractor because you can see the door back there, <laughs> but I can't get to it. Um, plus, we got a bunch of stuff here that, you know, through the projects and working and doing all this stuff, um, the carport catches a lot of stuff. So I need to get this carport somewhat organized and somewhat cleaned up because, yeah, um, I need access to my barn back here uh, because we're going to come into, into the heating season and I'm going to need to... Um, fire this this baby back up um, I do need to make some modifications to it um, the new plumbing system for the heating works great don't get me wrong it works it works absolutely great uh, but the problem I'm having is because I've slowed the flow down so much across the system um, to what it needed to be now, mind you, I didn't slow it down too much. I, I actually um, got the heating system to where it's efficient, but the problem I ran into is this huge, huge tank, which is behind these controls, that huge tank there, the water stratifies in it, and it's because the water is not moving in and out of the tank really fast. It's moving in and out of the tank at the rate it's being consumed. So... One of the projects I'm going to gear up to have to do is to take that tank and create a mixing circuit that actually 
moves the hot water from the top of the tank to the bottom of the tank so that the tank doesn't stratify. And what I mean by stratify is the bottom of the tank stays cold because, of course, heat rises. So the top of the tank is at temperature, and it's great. I can use it, and it heats the house. However, think of that tank like a big, huge battery. And the problem is I'm only keeping part of that battery charged up. And if we get the mixing circuit, we can charge the whole battery up and get a lot of hot water storage done in the process that, um, you know, I can rely on having heat all the way through more than a day uh, on a fire because it's mixed the hot water and not just had it stuck in the top of the tank. Um, it makes the heater more efficient once that heat, once that that uh, tank is all mixed up, because what happens is the water that's fed from the bottom of the tank and into the um, the boiler itself, uh, if if it's sitting at 20 degrees Celsius and the boiler has to heat it to 70 before pumping it into the top of the tank, well, obviously. That's a lot of energy to, to, to heat that water up to that point. So what the idea is, is in the early part of the season, which we're coming into shortly, you can get that tank warm and get the entire tank warm so that you're feeding, you know, 30 or 40 degree water to the, the boiler and the boiler's taking it up just that 30-ish or 20-ish degrees before pumping it back to the tank. A lot more efficient, right? Uh, it takes a lot less heat energy to do that, right? So um, once it's there and you can maintain it, it's, it's actually super, super, super efficient. But like I said, we're going down another rabbit hole. That's another project that I have to get onto. And I'm saying that because I got firewood that's just out there. I got hay that's here. And I'm just talking about all these projects that I got to get on. And... You know, instead of, you know, cutting firewood today, which, you know, we're starting to get into the warmer part of the day, and um, I probably should have got moving a little earlier because it is nearing, you know, um, 10 o'clock in the morning. I probably should have got moved earlier, but uh, it's been a long week. Um, we've had a lot of stuff going on, um, and I needed that little bit of extra sleep to try to catch up on some sleep. So anyway, um, where are we going with all this? I'm just saying we got a lot of projects and we got a lot of things going on and we got a lot of stuff that I need to get cracking on because you know what? Winter's coming and you know, there's no other way to say it, right? Uh, the cold is coming. I love the cold. Don't get me wrong. Uh, it's just combating it and you know, with firewood and everything like that. And thankfully for, for my friends that, that got the hay, they have hay for the winter for when, um, they can't pasture their animals. Um, but like I'm saying, winter's coming. So winter feed, I got winter heat outside, you know, on the other side of the barns. And I really, I, I need to get, uh, going on some of this stuff, but I need to take that pause. Like I started this whole, you know, this whole dialogue out is I need to get this organized so that I have room to do other things and actually go in and out of my barn and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I'm going to set you up on a tripod. We're going to set you off to the side and I'm going to get cracking on all this. Um, I will have to, um, do some organizing and kind of move the hay a little bit at a time. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to put it along the wall right here so that, uh, it's only one bale deep and you can see, I mean, there's a big difference between being one bale deep, which there's a bale right there. I'm going to actually put it on pallets. Um, but being one bell deep and being two bells, but also smack dab in the middle of the carport. So enough talking, let me get cracking. And, uh, uh, like I said, I'll set you up and we'll get going on this stuff.
All right, we got all the small stuff out of the way. Now it's time to break out the big guns because the pipe that's laying over there, that's full of cement. So we're gonna need the tractor to get that thing out of here. It's pretty heavy. So we're gonna have to move you here in the way of the tractor. All right, well, I was gonna use the tractor to move that pipe over there. Um, the tractor has the mulcher and it has the front loader shovel on it. And rather than spend the time to try to configure that, I'll just go ahead and I'll have a pallet jack and we're gonna use that pallet jack to grab it and get this out of here. So, or at least try, try to, right? Not gonna lie, this is heavy, really heavy. Look at this thing. So when we did our original renovations in there, where you see these new windows, there was two of these in the, in the room and they were holding a steel I-beam that went across the room. Well, the I-beam sat on a wall on that side and it sat on a wall and another wall on that side. And we're talking about an I-beam that's probably uh, 10 inches, if not a foot tall, heavy gauge I-beam. And there was two poles in that room. So we were like, nah, we don't, we don't need that, the two poles. The poles were like, maybe six foot apart. And the I-beam was already sitting on a wall. Then it went maybe 10 feet, had a post. Then it went maybe 12 feet or so to the next wall. That I-beam's going nowhere. So yeah, we, uh, we started cutting it and found out that the inside was full of cement. And man, that cut took forever. Uh, me and my friend Eric spent a while getting it cut and then the two of us put it out here so I had help putting it here but I gotta move it all by myself so we'll see how this works out Ooh, that thing is heavy so we need to block it somehow so that it doesn't want to roll off. So we'll try these uh, these gloves here. And hopefully it doesn't roll away. Yeah. All right, hopefully this thing doesn't roll away. Let's get it out of here. Now we're going to be smart about it this time around and instead of having to pick this thing up, I'm going to do something. I'm going to put it on the two wooden blocks. So we will raise it up some more. And then so I can grab it with the forklift later, or the forks on the tractor. We'll put one over there. And we'll put one over there. So it should be easier to pick up the next time, as long as this thing doesn't fall over when we're letting it down. Let's see. We don't need that much, so even if these boards tip over, which maybe, nope, held tight. 
Well, that'll make it easier to get rid of later because I do have to reconfigure the tractor because I'm going to be doing firewood all the week. So once I get this cleaned up in here, then it's firewood time, right? So yeah, now I got to go get uh, a couple of pallets and I got the broom on the wall right there. We'll clean this up. We'll start the pallets. Uh, I'm thinking you can see here where the end of the roof is. I'm thinking we're going to go about where the end of the table is just in case the rain kind of falls a little bit on a slant that the hay don't get wet. So, yep, let me go get some pallets. All right, so we got two pallets. And we'll start it. Right about there. Move this cord so we don't bury it. you I'll put you over here because I got to get that pallet out from down there by taking the first couple off so that I can keep shifting the pallets over hopefully it works no we'll, we'll see. So it's a little warm, but we got it done. At least this part's done. Yeah. Didn't take too long. Uh, wasn't that hard. Uh, don't get me wrong. The hay is, uh, the bells are a little bit heavy. They're not, they're not that heavy, but let me flip you around and show you. It is now all stacked up there. So you can see there's a color variation between these and those. So my first cut, I had to uh, leave it in the field for quite a while and actually thrash it, or not thrash it, but um, turn it multiple times. And it ended up not, I would say not as good of a hay. It's still, I mean, it still probably has some nutrition content, but it's a little stemmy. It's a little, I mean, but you can definitely see that nice that nice uh, green tinted bales. That was all that second cut. So all of the second cut ended up on this pile. So, and you can see there's only a couple of these first cut scattered around here. But now this is somewhat organized and it actually gives me an idea of how much room this uh, the hay is going to take up because I can get a pretty good bale count 
and um, the idea is to build an outbuilding to hold the hay because if you know anything about hay and how it spontaneously combusts yeah it's going to be a little easier to have peace of mind if this is in a side building that's not anywhere near you know the main barns or the house or anything this way hey if it catches fire from spontaneous combustion which you know sometimes it does it um i had my first cut i did have to get rid of some bales because they got hot 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 um i'm going over here to look uh they were they were nearing 150 degrees uh fahrenheit which is about it looks like 60 degrees celsius um and you may notice we keep this long thermometer here and like i jammed it in this bale and i try to get it so that it goes to the center of the bale and gives us a, a temperature on what the hay is doing um and that's how i found out that i had bales that were in the field still in the field um that were just hot hot and i had to you know if you've seen in the past videos we had to pile them along the bank and slash and cut them because i was worried about them catching on fire you know that was my first cut ever not the first cut of the year my first cut ever and we did battle with uh with mother nature and mother nature she kind of won because we ended up with Probably 50 or 60 bales, and probably 50 bales off the first cut. Um, and we got 50 bales off the second cut here, something like that. Um, so storage-wise, I'm going to try to plan for um, 250 bales for each season. So probably planning on storage for yeah, about 250 bales. Um, because if I have to store any more than that, I'll just, you know, between selling it and giving it away and stuff like that, I don't think we'll, we'll really hit 250 bales, um, because of the size of our fields and, you know, the fact that we're going to be feeding them and we're going to be selling them and, you know, all that. Um, I'd really like to start selling them. Um, hopefully I can get uh, well, yeah, I'm hoping, you know, we'll figure at a minimum three a bell. Uh, I'd like to get, uh, seven a bell. I don't know if I can get seven a bell. Seven a bell would be great. Uh, but we'll shoot for, you know, about half that and three, three a bell, especially I'm a new guy. Um, you know, and my field is going to be maturing and my field is going to be getting, you know, the, I'm going to do the frost seeding and I'm going to do some, some, um, some pH adjusting and get some lime on the field so we can get some good, uh, good clover and stuff like that going, um, so that it's a really high quality hay that people will desire. And of course, the better your hay and the more desirable your hay, the better, you know, the more the price you can get for it. Um, I'm not a hay farmer, not yet. Um, I'm a homesteader, so uh, I need to cut hay for my animals and I need to, you know, try to supplement, um, the homestead with selling some of that hay, uh, cause that's what it's all about. It's all about self-sufficiency and getting away from, um, you know, I don't want to say consumerism cause then it's going to sound like, you know, I'm conspiracy theorist and, you know, crazy, but, um, I, I do think that um, getting away from purchasing and buying all of our stuff, like we had corn out of our garden, um, and I'll, I'll include that, that clip, but we pulled corn last weekend, and that's the corn we had with our dinner, um, and it was great. It came from our garden, so um, once we get to growing animals for, you know, for food, whether it's the chickens laying eggs, the chickens that we will harvest for the, the meat or the, the, the steer. Um, it's self-sufficiency. It's, you know, knowing where your food came from. And, you know, it's, 
you're not you're not uh, buying and you know I, I it's just it's a no-brainer right um, for now we got to move on to other stuff right so I got to get rid of that pile that's laying here in the carport I got this cardboard that I got to get all cut up I'm not going to show you that you guys know what cutting cardboard up is all about uh, but we are going to continue working around the homestead um, keep this weekend productive uh, it is like as you can see it is sunny it's bright it's warm warm not hot warm um, and yeah so let me get on to other th stuff
so we got the forks on the tractor now. That's going to help with doing firewood. I uh, got that mowing done around the back, like I said earlier. Uh, that lets me take the, uh, the mulcher off, and you saw me put that in the lower barn. Yeah, and of course the carport. And what we're going to do is we're going to sneak up on, on Mama because she's over on the other side of the house. She got home a little while ago. So we're going to sneak through, and here's the cat doing cat things, of course, on the table where it doesn't belong, being curious. So we'll cut through this way out to the front. And there she is. She's cleaning up the, <clears throat> the grass clippings from weed whacking out front here. Man, it is hot out here. It's supposed to be a hot one all next week, like hot, hot, like crazy hot. And I still have all this wood. And we got to get cracking on it because I want to make sure that this wood doesn't get ruined. So you can see Ray's still back there cleaning the sidewalk. And yeah, we're walking down to the, <clears throat> the lower 40 now. Just kind of going on a stroll. And I only have a little bit more room for firewood over here. Um, yeah. What, I, what we're thinking is we'll put the last couple here. I can get one, two, three, four, five, six, at least six more over here. And then we got to put it somewhere else. So we're debating on turning it down and, and going down this way. And we also have to worry about hay storage. So that's one of the things we've been trying to figure out as well. But it's been a productive day. It's been a productive couple of days, actually. Um, we, uh, we had a busy week. We had uh, different places we had to be after work. Um, some not so good. Uh, not with us. It's, you know, villagers, other people that, <clears throat> that live in our village. And yeah, um, so it's been a rough, a rough week, but mama's almost done out front here. And, uh, I think she's going to want me to put the little brush on the, on the weed whacker. I'm going to flip you around. So I think she's going to want the brush on the weed whacker to get that stuff there on the curb and stuff. And yeah, to get all the stuff in the stones over there. So you can see the shadow. It's, it's late in the day. I think she's tired too. I'm not sure. So she's about done there. She, uh, We'd whacked around the, well, let me, let me take you up here and show you. So if you remember, we planted a um, pine tree, a tree that we had inside for Christmas. And when we planted it, it was not this tall. So that's about the height of my shoulder now. But she weed whacked around the bottom of them. She named them Jesus. Go figure, right? And then she cleaned up all around the, the rose bushes. So that looks really good. <clears throat> but it's been productive. 
and with the sun at my back it puts you guys in a bad spot so we're gonna slip over to the window to the wall there you go and she's going the long way we're going the short way <laughs> She says, no, I'll go to the short way, too. <clears throat> but, like I said, it was a productive day. We got a little bit done. Uh, it's been a productive couple of days because there is footage from other days that uh, is going to be on this, this uh, installment. I'm trying to break out a chair here so I can sit down and talk to y'all real quick. <clears throat> Oh, she's gonna she's gonna take the chair. She thought I was getting it for her, but I, I was getting it for her. <laughs> so anyway, it was a somewhat productive day. Uh, I don't I don't think she realizes. Hang on. In a wedding. I'm wearing a microphone here, just so you know, and you can so they hear so you, the folks out there can hear you. But uh, she went to like a flea market type thing today. Um, and then a wedding this afternoon. And then a friend's wedding this afternoon while I was here moving the hay from the middle here to the nice row here that you can see. And I got it pretty straight down that row, right? But then I did some mowing, and yeah, it uh, was an okay day. Uh, but like I said, the week, we, we had a funeral during the week to go to. We yeah. had, you know, um, it's the second funeral in just as many weeks. So definitely. Well, it was second funeral in a week, exactly one week. Well, it's, yeah, it's two weeks, two funerals. So, um, but and then we got the wedding this weekend. The next week we have a wedding, and then the weekend after that we have a wedding. No, no, no. We get to skip a week, and then we have a wedding. Somewhere we get to skip a week. And yeah, so but we it's, have three weddings. It's going to be some craziness coming up, but it, at least this is good craziness. It's not the craziness like we had for the last two weeks. Yeah. So, but. Uh, we're going to get going, and uh, I'm going to fire up the barbecue and grill up a steak while she cooks french fries. Uh, french fries. Um, so we're going to enjoy a nice a nice steak dinner with some fries. And uh, then I'm going to sit down and start editing this and get it out to you. So you know my motto. If you're thinking about family, you're thinking about friends, give them the what's up or the WhatsApp. You know you'd love to hear from them too. And until the next one, off you to Zayn. Cheers. So we're out here and we're in the garden and the corn, well, while the corn is not very tall and, you know, we didn't get to weed it today um, because we weed on the weekend, but we got some fresh corn. I think it's ready. So we're going to grab an ear and see what's up. So Rachel's going to shuck this corn. And while it's normal to have the tip not fully mature, all the rest, look at that, that's beautiful. So, we shucked one over here, now we got those two. Yeah, we lost a little bit here because it wasn't 100% ready. But, we're going to have fresh corn tonight. <laughs> 